3.5 gigahertz. It's kind of scary because I haven't upgraded a computer in such a long time, like over 10 years. Hopefully, I mean, some of the parts I got from eBay, so that's a bit scary as well, like secondhand RAM, secondhand processor. I'm hoping it will go smoothly and it's gonna be exciting to see how it goes. What are you worried about? Just damaging it. I remember the first time I made my own computer, I damaged uh, the motherboard and the processor. Oh god. Yeah, yeah I think I, I spilled water on it or something stupid oh, like that. No. Yeah, I did something really dumb. Or I stepped on it. I was only like 12 at the time. I was a little kid. So hopefully I won't do that again. Yeah. Alright, so this is the CPU sink. I got myself some Arctic Clean one to remove the thermal paste on the CPU and the heat sink. I've got part two, which is the purifier. Once we remove the thermal paste, we're gonna apply the purifier on the heatsink. Got myself a hex. This one's five inches long, and this is to unscrew the heatsink. And I've also got a lint-free microfiber cloth. And this is the thermal paste. I'm using Arctic Silver 5, and this is to make sure that the, the new CPU applies well with the heatsink. And finally, I got myself the max CPU you can get. It's a Xeon X5690. And what's cool about these CPUs is there's no pins. All right, let's get to it. To unscrew, rotate anti-clockwise. The hex key you need is size M3, which means three millimeters wide. And the length of the one I'm using is 130 millimeters, which is around five inches in length. As you can see, it fits nicely in the holes provided with leeway of around an inch. After you've unscrewed it enough, you just need to pull it out a bit and it comes off. And there's the thermal paste that we need to remove. And that's the processor. Arctic Clean 1 to remove the thermal paste. To remove the thermal paste, I used Arctic Clean 1, which is the thermal material remover. I first applied it to the heat sink, then used a lint-free microfiber cloth to remove the residue. I've got part two, which is the purifier. I then applied Arctic Clean 2 which is the surface purifier. The old CPU was easily removed by pushing down and swiping away the lock and then opening the CPU tray. I also cleaned up the CPU using the Arctic Clean set as I had lots of it remaining. The new CPU goes in one correct way only. This can be identified by matching the ridges of the CPU with the ones on the CPU tray. Also, if you look at the back of the CPU, the corners which are diagonally flat match with the corners of the CPU tray. Push the tray down and lock in with the spring lock. Next, I applied Arctic Clean 2 with a lint-free microfiber cloth to purify the lid. And finally, placing a dot of thermal paste on the center of the CPU. 
Now there are several different methods of applying thermal paste. This is the one I chose after doing the research. And I've been using my machine for over six months fine with no overheating problems, so I'm happy to recommend it. back on so this plug will go here we've lined up this pillar with the pillar on this side make sure that this plug goes on this one and when it's on it balances just push it down Alright, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put it back in, turn it on, see if it works. Whoa, 3.5 gigahertz. Before closing the lid and celebrating, I ran two intensive applications. First, Synbench, and more importantly, Geekbench. You'll know you've done a good job if there's no red light blinking on the motherboard. If so, you've got problems. Alright, first up, when removing the thermal paste, the first time I did this, I followed the guide that suggested using a cotton earbud. Alright, what I've learned here is, don't use one of these cotton bud things. You do leave a bit of strings when you rub on the CPU. Get yourself a can of compressed air to make sure you can blow away as much as possible if you are using cotton earbuds. You probably will need some lint-free gauze, and I've got some, <laughs> so why don't you ask me? <laughs> What's a lint-free gauze? Lint-free lint gauze. So lint is the stuff that you're referring to with the cotton, the very fine hairs that come off, and gauze is just like a like a wipe almost, like a microfiber, except it doesn't have a lint, so you don't have that problem. You should have asked me, babes. Sorry. Secondly, make sure you run CPU intensive applications before closing up shop, as if you notice that red blinking light on the motherboard, it usually means that the CPU is overheating, which suggests that you haven't applied thermal paste correctly, or, as was in my case, I had followed incorrectly a guide for upgrading a 2009 Mac Pro, which required being extra careful with tightening the heatsink, whereas the 2010 edition doesn't require this, you can just tighten it until it locks up. So after making sure the heatsink was tightened, it was okay again. This one's locked. So previously there was a blinking red light here, and that pretty much just means that the heatsink isn't applied to the CPU well enough, so the CPU is overheating. That's what the red that's what the red light means. So it looks like when you're screwing in the heatsink on the 2010 version, you got to screw in all the way until the hex driver just doesn't screw in anymore. Just lightly spin it around until there is some hardening. You don't screw that bit in. Unlike um, other tutorials I've seen online where you need to count the number of spins, this one with the 2010 Mac Pro, you just got to screw in all the way. After the upgrade, as you can see, the performance of the Mac Pro CPU pretty much doubled. Thanks again for watching and big shout out to the Mac Pro community out there. We've got another year to wait until the new Mac Pro comes out. So in the meantime, I love hearing about all your experiences upgrading your old systems and I love watching your videos. So if you made anything new, make sure you leave a comment below and I'd love to check it out.